We are working to restore peatlands all across the Lake District and other uplands in Cumbria. Most of our restoration work is going to be focused at trying to restore the moss layer at the top of the peat so it can actively form peat again. The key to peat formation is sphagnum mosses or bog mosses. They're the main peat forming plant. Uh, they don't just uh, grow on peatlands, they really are the peatland. They build up and build up and build up above the original water table and eventually they can form a dome that stands up above what was originally a wet basin. Where we're standing here on this peatland, it looks fairly solid, but in actual fact it's a hill of waterlogged plant material and our work to protect peat bogs is all about ensuring that the sphagnum mosses continue to grow at the soil surface and continue to build up forming peat. Peatlands at Forest Hall Farm are probably typical of UK peatland. They've got extensive cracking and large amounts of sinkholes to be formed from those cracks. Some of these are big enough for people and animals to fall down. These cracks are joining up and forming a large system of erosion gullies. And eventually, where these gullies are becoming wider and joining together, they're leaving isolated islands of peat that we know as peat hags. The sides of these are getting eroded, wind and rain getting in onto the edges in winter. They're drying them and crumbling them. Any plants that start to grow during the summer will get killed in the winter because frost forms large ice crystals in the very soft friable soils. It's very rare to see these erosion features actually heal themselves once they've started to fall. Our work to stop the erosion has used excavators to flatten down steep erosion faces. Wherever it's possible, we've tried to stretch the surrounding vegetation cover to cover up the bare areas. This requires us to use specialist machines. We've got very wide tracks on them so they don't sink down into the soft deep peat. Where we find sinkholes and cracks forming up and downstream from the gullies, We've blocked these two to try and stop the erosion continuing later. We're covering up as much work as possible with turf. We're aiming to make the work blend right back into the landscape as quickly as possible. Most of it within months becomes scarcely visible. Any patches of bare peat that remain, we're going to have to reseed these. This is going to be more of a challenge and it's going to be more of a long-term process. The plants in the fells are growing very slowly. We're going to put in local cotton grass plants and add heather seed. Both of them have big roots which can help hold the soil together. We're going to be spreading bog mosses that we've collected from the site across the surface, helping to keep it damp. When we look at peat soils, they're almost entirely made of carbon. Our peatlands are storing 20 times more carbon than Britain's forests. So clearly, preventing this continued loss of peat soils is going to be key to the fight against climate change. Drinking water also comes from the uplands. So if our peat is damaged, it starts to turn water brown as it runs downstream, costing money to water companies to try and clean it up. Also, it's filling up their reservoirs with sediment as the peat is washed down into them. That potentially could cost an absolute fortune to fix. Cumbria is particularly rich in rare bog species. We're lucky to have some quite unusual bog habitats here. We have valley mires and basin mires, which are wetter types of peatland than a blanket bog. They form where water naturally pools in depressions. Here the vegetation can be a bit richer because there's groundwater running into the site, bringing various minerals. We also get lots of pools in these mires and uh, the pools and little runnels attract water plants and water insects. You can get large numbers of dragonflies breeding up here. And again, we'll be get, getting birds that are attracted in to feed on the insects that we find. But the reason we're asking to make the soil as wet as possible is we need to protect the bog mosses that are growing and restore bog mosses onto areas that don't already have them on, because these bog mosses are what's going to form the peat in future. They also protect the peat surface, prevent it drying and cracking out during summer droughts. Recently been much talk of the increase in liver fluke. This is a parasite that's spread by snails that live in wet grassland. Deep peat soils like this, snails are very rare because they actually need calcium to build their shells. This soil is very acidic, which means that snails are really unable to build shells here. So fluke is not going to spread into these bogs that we restore, even if we do make them wetter. Another disease that sheep get that's well known to be centered on bogs is known as sout locally. This is a toxicity problem caused by bog asphodel, which is a common plant on bogs. Now, it's a very widespread plant in Cumbria. It grows on very wet bogs, and it grows probably even more on bogs that have been dried out. We're not really expecting this plant to become any more common on the sites where we're doing restoration. To finish off 
thought I'd quickly discuss what changes you might expect to see on a restored peat site. These changes will be quite subtle, particularly on blanket bogs up in the fells, because the ground is mostly sloping. That means that rainwater runs off the surface, it runs into becks and the ground isn't going to completely flood. We're going to restore the bog mosses on the soil surface, which will keep it damp so it doesn't dry out in very hot weather. That should reduce the amount of bare peat patches that we have, increase the cover of vegetation.